Oh, I am in a live program. Maybe many people are watching me. So, I need to introduce about me. I am Laka Otaruna from TSWRDCW Nizamabad. Friends, have you ever thought of the fundamental question? What is language? And what is thinking? And today I am going to discuss with you, does language shape the way we think? Today, I am very excited to talk about three sections in my presentation and the first section is understanding what language is, how action can be language and I am going to discuss about the idea of image, imagination and language and the second section is what is thinking. Friends, do you think how our thoughts grow with age? And I am going to talk about language theory called sapir wolf hypothesis. And the third section is, does language influence on our thinking? And in this section, I am going to discuss relationship between language and culture. And, and also, I am going to discuss about language in media. Today morning, the moment I woke up, I remember a story which I read in my childhood. Once upon a time, there is a small family in a small town. A mother, father and two sisters. Elder sister's name is Ella and younger sister's name is Cinderella. On a fine day, Cinderella's father brings a new car to home. And Cinderella loves it a lot and goes to the car, takes a stone in her hand and approaches the car and scribbles something on the car. Whereas, Cinderella's father observes everything by standing at the corridor. He rushes to her. He, without asking anything, without thinking anything, he beats up Cinderella black and blue. After punishing her, he comes to the car and observes that she wrote, Love you, Dad. Then he realizes and goes to her and gives her a tight hug and says, love you to Cinderella. In the story, the action of Cinderella is language because Cinderella expresses her feeling towards her father through action and this has reached to his mind. Friends, we all know that the language of children is not adequate. In our story, Cinderella expresses her feeling towards her father through language and also through action. And here we can say that action can be a language. And friends, as a child, I always wondered why there are so many languages in our world. How are these languages are formed? We cannot think clearly without using language. Have you ever thought of the question, what is language? Friends, I say baby talk is also a language. Sometimes we do silly things with language. One of the silliest situation is when we find ourselves in front of a newborn baby. What do we do? We talk to it. We probably say, hello or what's your name? Why do we do that? The baby certainly hasn't learned any language yet. And yet we talk to it as if it does. So friends, I say baby talk is also a language. My dear audience, I have one more interesting question for you all. Why do we use language at all? And why did the human race learn to speak, write and sign? What is the use of language? We might think the answer is very simple. To communicate with each other? No, but there is more to it than that. We use language to express our feelings, thoughts and ideas. And also we use language to, to take information from other people when they ask us. Sometimes we tell lies or sometimes we tell truth. But in all these cases, the basic aim is clear. We want the ideas in our head to get into someone else's head. For that to happen, we must speak them, we must strike them or we must sign them. Friends, I can say that 
language is a structured system of communication. It can be verbal or it can be visual. It can also be image or it can also be a sign. Friends, have you ever thought of the question, what is communication? Communication is nothing but sharing ideas, opinions and feelings to each other. Now, you may get a doubt. What is the difference between language and communication? Language is nothing but which conveys meaning. Communication is expressing one's own ideas, feelings and thoughts. And this is what the difference between language and communication. Friends, I have just now I have said that language can be both verbal and visual. One day a child goes to his mother and asks her mother, who is that old man sitting on the mountain? The mother answers, don't call him an old man. He is Lord Buddha who knows the answer for every question in this universe. Really? Does he know the answer for all the question? Asks the child. Yes, my dear, replies the mother. One day, a child goes to the mountain where Buddha is meditating. Takes a butterfly from the garden and cupping the butterfly gently in his hand, he approaches Buddha and asks her, is the thing in my hand alive or dead? If and the child thinks that if Buddha answers that the thing is alive, he will crush the butterfly gently in his hands and show the butterfly to Buddha and proving Buddha wrong. If Buddha answers that the thing is dead and the child is going to open his gently cupped hand and show allowing the butterfly to fly away from him and showing a live butterfly to him and again proving Buddha wrong. Buddha would not know the answer for all the questions. Is the thing in my hand alive or dead? Asked the eager child. Then Buddha slowly opens his eyes and nods his head and says, My dear son, the answer lies in your hands. Friends, from this story, here we can observe that two kinds of languages are operating. One is that of the child to himself and the other is between the, chi between the child and the mother. In the first case, the child thinks as he imagines. And a, whereas in the conversation between mother and the child, the child expresses his feeling towards the Buddha through words and also through body language in a structured communication system. Whereas in the conversation between mother, child and Buddha is carried out through words and also through body language. But at this point, what I am more interested is the imagination and thinking of the child. What do you think he imagines? And how does he come up with the idea of a butterfly? Did he think in words or in images? Friends, I would like to draw your attention to the point language can be verbal and visual or it can be image or sign. Friends, we know that language is so complex to define. Language has been defined in various ways. Friends, do you think is there any relationship between language and thinking? In the story, we have observed that child thinks to prove Buddha wrong. Is thinking is a language? Let's see how thinking and imagination can be formed as language. And now the question is, what is thinking? Now let us see the responses from my friends. And from my friends' responses, I concluded that thinking is a process of forming an idea about something. The child wants to prove Buddha wrong at any cost. And if Buddha answers that the thing is alive, the child thought to crush the butterfly, right? Do you think, does he, ima does he think in images or in words? Our thoughts comes or images first? Our image comes or language first? And I feel I can say that language is what gives the thought. And thinking is determined by the language. Friends, here I would like to illustrate an example for our language is shaped by our thoughts and imagination. Let us consider a child drawing 
drawing a kid of five years old. What do you think he draws? A mother, father, and a child holding his hand, and a beautiful house behind his background. What does this image suggest? The image suggests that they are living in a happy home. My dear friends, isn't it correct? Yes, you are absolutely correct. And the next thing is, if we ask the same child to draw the picture, to draw a paint, what do you think he he or she is going to depict? Maybe more thoughtful than his child's artwork? Yes. From this, we can say that our thinking power grows as our age grows. Friends, from the illustration, we can say that the child thinks like a kid because she draws like a kid and she draws like a teenager because she thinks like a teenager and she draws like a woman because she now thinks like a woman. Our thoughts grows as your age grows. Friends, now let us discuss about the language theories. And the language theory is going to be deal with Safir Wolf hypothesis. Do you know what does this hypothesis says? Language revolves around the idea that language has power and can control how you see the world. According to Safir Wolf hypothesis, I can say that linguistic relativism states the structure of language, how the listener or the speaker look at the worldview. This suggests that thoughts are determined by the language, but not in all these cases. Language cannot determine their structure in all these cases and how they look at the worldview. And this view is called linguistic relativism. Friends, now I would like to draw your attention from individual thinking to mass thinking. Friends, have you ever come across the question, what is culture? Culture is nothing but thoughts and beliefs of group of people and for instance i would like to draw you i would like to give you an example women in india dress up traditionally while going to temple and this idea was accepted by group of people and therefore this has becomes their culture friends do you know there is a strong relationship between language and culture Language not only influences the individual thinking, but also it affects the thinking of group of people through their common thoughts and their culture. Friends, now I would like to draw your attention in language in advertisements. I think you might wonder why this girl is talking about language in advertisements. Because language in advertisements is influencing on people's thinking and their behavior. Nowadays, we come across many cosmetics ads and therefore, there are many taglines which encourages the customer to buy the products whether they are needed or not. Friends, in point of view, what is advertisement? Advertisement is the best way to communicate with the customers, right? It helps and informs the pro customers to buy the products and, and also nowadays, we come across many beauty ads. Friends, do you use beauty creams? I know that you use beauty creams. For example, a famous tagline called HD Glow. What is this suggesting you? What is this saying you? HD Glow is nothing but high definition glow, right? Friends, do you really think by using this product we are going to have high definition glow to our skin? Why do we need fair skin? Why not dark complexion? If we think practically, our India is a tropical country. So, we all are bound to have dark complexion. And why do we fight for the fair skin? Why can't we adjust with the dark complexion? Because language in advertisement is making the people to think about their skin. Mainly they are influencing on women's thinking. And they are using fair skinned girl for beauty, pro for beauty advertisements. Why only women are going to do uh, beauty advertisements? Why not the men? Okay, now I will ask you a question. Is really a girl in India would like to have face skin? Why did these advertisements are encouraging and attracting the people? Because through language, 
through words and through images they are attracting the people and therefore i have one more tagline called you are more beautiful than you look safir wolf hypothesis says safir wolf hypothesis book a ways of saying says that men women should look as men wants to why women should look why women should have softer smoother and glowing skin why did the tagline is like this you are more beautiful than you think friends do you think that you are beautiful do you think i am beautiful okay it's fine whereas safir wolf hypothesis says that women should look as men wants to in 1964 only they have decided that women should have softer smoother and glowing skin why not the men why only women are forced to have softer smoother and glowing skin why did the men wants to look girl should be thin and girl should have a long hair and why did should why girl should have face skin why did they think like that because advertisements are influencing on men's thinking too not only they are concentrating on women's thinking and friends if you observe clearly if you observe clearly we have a question in our mind right language and media is very controlled they are only showing women for cosmetic beauty ads why not the men and friends now i would like to tell you what we have discussed in our story in our presentation we have discussed language can be words actions and images and in the second we have dis we have discussed that circumstances determine our thoughts and thinking and lastly we have discussed that language of the media controls mass thinking friends i would like to tell you a beautiful story which i like the most there are two parrots which grows in uh, the first one grows in hunter's house and the second one grows in a good environment and in a peaceful environment friends what do you think the parrot which grows in hunter's house can i have a answer please yes you are absolutely correct the parrot which grows in hunter's house learns vulgar language learns bad language because the thinking of hunter is influenced on parrot whereas the second one grows in a grows in a beautiful environment and learns a good language respects everyone and receives everyone in a honorable manner friends now you got my point right what i am going to say you yes you are absolutely correct language is shaping our thoughts language is shaping our thinking whereas language is what gives the thought friends now i would like to thank my friends and as well as to my lecturers and my my heartful thanks to my secretary sir